buscando a Nemo, parte 6. Nigel voló hasta la oficina del dentista para contarle las novedades a Nemo. Tu papá ha estado buscándote por todo el océano. Se ha enfrentado con tiburones y otros peligros y ahora viene para Sydney. ¿Mi papá? ¿Marlene? Nigel asintió. Ese es Marlene, el pequeño pez payaso del acantilado. De verdad, inspirado, Nemo agarró un guijarro y saltó otra vez al filtro. Esta vez el guijarro se quedó bien atrancado, deteniendo el filtro. Gil y los demás lo victoriaron. Tiburoncín, lo conseguiste. Ahora los peces tenían que ensuciar la pecera para obligar al dentista a limpiarla. Cerca de Sydney, Marlene y Dory se despidieron de las tortugas marinas y salieron de la CAO. Entonces, vieron que cientos de peces pasaban nadando a toda velocidad y gritando, ¡Escápense rápido! Es que venía una enorme ballena. Aunque Marlene trató de detenerla, Dory le pidió a la ballena en lenguaje cetáceo instrucciones para llegar a la ciudad. Pero era demasiado tarde. Marlene y Dory fueron atrás arrastrados al interior de la boca del animal. Marlene estaba enojado. Había viajado demasiado lejos para terminar de este modo. Pero, Do pero Dory seguía optimista. Cuando la ballena levantó la lengua, Dory le preguntó qué pasaba. Dice que te tranquilices. Todo va a acabar bien. Marlene tragó saliva. Enseguida, una corriente interna los lanzó hacia adentro y la ballena los expulsó al aire con un chorro de agua. Ante ellos se extendía un panorama singular. La costa de Sydney. Alright guys, so let's get to the Predator vs. Imperfect part of this. Uh, before we start, I just want to say thank you to those of you who are sticking around for this very long story. So, uh, Nigel flew to the office, so he just did this to tell the news. Um, and then right here uh, it says Nigel Asintio, so he nodded, he just did it, he wasn't doing it, he just, you know, he did it all of a sudden. And then uh, Nemo was inspired by the story, so he, he grabbed the rock and he jumped into the filter. These are just things he was doing. He did, you know, he did this, did that. He, you know, he stuck the rock in there and it stayed stuck, uh, so it just stayed there. Uh, everybody cheered, so they just cheered. They weren't cheering, they just cheered. And they said, you know, Shark Bay, you did it, because he did it. He wasn't doing it, he just did it. And then the fish, uh, now they had to, you know, make the tank dirty. So the Tanion is the imperfect because, remember, the Tanair and the Preterite doesn't mean to have, but it's like to, to got, like, uh, if you said, yo tuve la bola, it wouldn't be like saying, I got, I had the ball, but it's like, I got the ball. It's kind of like receiving something. Uh, so that's it for this page. Let's take a look at page 29. All right, so it's page 29. We have, um, this first part, say despide, say, say despidieron, is the predator of despidieron. Say to say goodbye, because they just, they said goodbye to the turtles, and they left the current. And then they saw that there were all these fish passing by swimming. So pasaban on her hair is in the perfect because they wanted to give the idea of this was happening at the time. Um, they said, you know, swim away or whatever it was they were saying. It's because this whale was coming. So veneer is in the perfect because they want to again, paint this picture for you that it was happening. Uh, and then Marlin tried uh, to stop her, uh, but Dory asked the whale. So these are things that just happened once in her uh, whale voice. If you haven't seen this movie before, I imagine you probably have, but if you haven't, this part's really funny when she's she's speaking a uh, whale. Uh, but it was too late. It was uh, ongoing. It was too late. Often um, things related to time in Spanish are going to be an imperfect. Um, they were swept away into the mouth. So they, were they weren't being swept. They just all of a sudden were swept into the mouth. Marlon was mad. So again, here's a feeling. Uh, feelings are often going to be an imperfect. Um, Dory con continued to be optimistic, and optim optimistic is again like a kind of like a feeling, so uh, that's why that's an imperfect. Uh, when the whale lifted up its tongue, Dory asked what was happening. So, Preterit, he did it. Preterit, she asked Pasaba because they wanted to know what was happening in the story. That's why that's an imperfect. And then um, Marlin gulped, so he just did that once, right? And then this uh, current, this water current, um, Threw them inside, and then the whale shot him out of the shot him out of his blowhole in the fountain of water. Uh, and then when they they landed in the water, there was this panoramic view like extending in front of them. So this is where they were kind of painting a picture for you, wanting you to get an idea of what it was looking like at the time. And that's why extenderse is in the imperfect. 
Uh, that's it for part six, I think we're on. Um, we're getting close to the end. There might be a few more pipes and I'm going to finish the story. Thanks again for uh, watching my series. We'll see you probably tomorrow. Thanks.